people buy shit mm -hmm. to fill gaps. Yeah. Do you, do you touch on that a little bit? Like why they buy a designer bag when they can't afford it, but they need it to peacock, they get the quick endorphin hit and then they need it to like signal to the world like no, I'm not a loser, I have a Chanel bag. Like, do you go there a little bit? Yeah, I do. And I'm not, you know, like, I, it's, I do. I, it's a book in itself. Yeah. I'm curious on how much, if any, you touch on it. Yeah. Because everyone's gonna say, I can't save, I can't invest. I'm like, you sure can. Like, don't buy the new iPhone every time it comes out. Yeah. Um, there is actually a phenomenon um, coined by Estee Lauder, uh, the limp lipstick index, in that during times yes. of financial downturn, yep. you actually see the purchases and the revenue for companies that sell little treats. That's right. Tick up. During the Great Depression. Yep. People makeup bought perfume. Exploded. Yep. Exactly. Little hits. Little treat. Little treat. Yep. Not private planes, but just makeup. That was the luxury. And when you can't afford the flat screen TV, much less the car, much less the home, a little hit will give I, you the dopamine that you need. I am aware. But it prevents you from getting to these bigger the goals. When you are really in debt and you were buying a $19 cocktail yeah. at happy hour, there's that you've got to figure that shit out. Yeah. That constant Uber, seamless Starbucks, it fucking adds up and our society currently has decided that that's a necessity, not a luxury. Yep, but I also address the flip side of that conversation. I heard you, So I heard you, which I love. The little stuff matters, it, it does. does add up. It's yep. death by a thousand paper cuts if yep. you get a coffee every single day and you yep. get the Uber every day, whatever. Uh -huh. But there's also a school of thought that says, make sure when you take the big swings, you are negotiating your ass off because if you can get $50,000 off of the purchase price of your home, it's $50,000. That's 50 grand. If you, you know how much you're gonna save If you can get $7,000 more in your salary, it's $3,500 more. Well, actually, in my tax bracket, much more than that yes. for the normal person. Yes, and 100%. it's so much easier to make more money or save big bucks when you're buying the big ticket items versus trying to nickel and dime yourself. Because I do think you're allowed to have a little treat, but to your point, if you have too many little treats too many days a week, it really can hold you back. You know, the way I think about finances is pretty interesting. I, I don't think about it from a, what, you know, one, my whole life I've been able to make money. So, you know, and I understand that that's a rare talent, I do. Like, most people aren't super gifted in making money. So I'm, I don't fear finances the way many do. Um, at the same token, I don't put it on a, for that reason probably, I don't love it either. So when I think about five or 10 years from now, it feels similar to now, which is I want to keep making money so I can keep reinvesting it and, and, and keep giving myself opportunities to play. Um, I'm not, you know, I save money for a rainy day, but you don't need that much. Yeah. Well, let, let me rephrase, it's percentage by, I don't need that much by percentage of what I make because I'm not looking to live too big of a lifestyle. So I put some away, but for the most part, I use money to give myself opportunities to play business. It's like a game. So kind of you against the lavish lifestyle? Uh, against the what, my friend? Lavish. Lavish. Lavish? Yeah, for me, it doesn't bring me pleasure. I don't want a boat, I don't want a fancy car, I don't want jewelry or art. But, but I don't judge other people. If, they, if you can afford it, do whatever the hell you want. Give it all away to charity, buy a $5 million painting. If you can afford, especially if you made it, if you made the money and you can afford it, you're my favorite person. Because then you can do whatever the hell you want with your money. I think, and by the way, if you inherit it, you inherited it, you know, so you were in a fortunate situation. Obviously, I don't look at that the same way because I admire people who make it. But no, I do not. I'm unbelievably unimpressed with somebody who flaunts their money with things. I don't judge it, but it doesn't get me excited at, I mean, at all. I've never looked at anything and been impressed by it for its cost. I don't even know what things cost. Yeah. I don't, you know, like, you know, when I go to like, if I'm in, you know, I think a lot about when I'm in Cannes for the marketing festival or if I'm in Beverly Hills for an event or, 
I remember I was somewhere, it was like very fancy cars. I don't know what is, what's a $500,000 car, what's a $5 car, like it just, jewelry, forget about it, I have no idea, art, no clue. It's just not on my radar. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think about that at all. At all, at all. Okay. Will you ever be retired? No. <laughs> no. I will never retire. I will 100% die actively working. Okay. 100%. It, I, I, there would be nothing that would make me more unhappy than to retire. Okay. Now I say that today at 43. Maybe at 97, I won't. But I don't think so because I think my mind would really struggle. You know? Maybe my body will give out as I get closer to 100, but not with technology. I just don't, I don't see it. No way. I like it too much. So you encourage everybody to be productive all the time? No, I encourage everybody to reverse engineer their hard wiring. You know? I think a lot of people should work nine to five and make 53,000 a year and live a great life. I think the problem is a lot of those people want to make a million dollars and then feel stress instead of accepting what makes them happy. Yeah, I, th I think that, I think people need to be productive in their way. And if that, you know, there's somebody who's listening to this right now who can't wait to do non-profit work all the time and if they want to work until they're 50 and 55, 60, 65 and then do non-profit work for 30 years, that's what makes them happy. But I started liking to work and I'm gonna finish that way too. Give me a February 7th, 2024 hot take mm. on anything financial that's got your attention. Ooh. And I don't, I'm not looking for you to predict something because that I think is silly. Yeah. I'm talking more like anything that's on your mind in the game of like last year's, uh, there's a presidential election mm -hmm. and Biden may not win mm -hmm. and if Trump wins, this tax thing will change and so keep your, if you've been thinking about something this year, that, or have you paid attention to this, mm -hmm. or here's the reason that, or is there anything that you as a thinker of finances are like hot on or that's kind of clever out there right now? Yeah, you guys want to time travel? Always. You can still contribute to that Roth IRA and to your retirement accounts for last year, before the tax date. Love. And that way, you still can have it basically essentially count for last year. Right, and a lot of people think that when 1231 hits, actually, it's actually, over. Actually, excuse me. Please. You can contribute to your IRA so that you can actually get a taxable benefit from for last year's taxes yep. versus this year having yep. to beat 2024. Um, so you can time travel and I think that's really good. Yeah, because for a lot of people, they don't know how they're gonna splurge, especially if they're working tight. They don't know what the holidays are gonna look like. But now on February 7th, you got a little bit of a feel. Like yeah. you're into the year a little bit. You know if you have job stability, or you, you never know, but like of course, you know, things like that. Go ahead, and can I, I see make, yeah, I see and you can I make yeah, a prediction yeah, that please. I can guarantee you comes true? So you have a prediction that you're very hot on? No, I, can gar I, I am okay. certain. Great, well good news. So, when it happens, yes. we'll clip this, and if it doesn't <laughs> happen, we'll definitely clip, clip this. this. Right, I will say you're gonna be like, oh, well that's like a soft prediction, that's but okay. like it's true. That's okay. So there's a current, trend going on called loud budgeting. And I think that it is here to stay and it'll actually become a very pervasive thing in our communities. So for people who aren't chronically online, loud budgeting is essentially where uh, it is now socially acceptable for you to talk about your financial goals with your friends and use them as an excuse to get out of social obligations, out of things that are gonna cost money. Um, so suddenly. Transparency. Yes. And vulnerability. Yes. Will lead to less discomfort in the long term, maybe a little bit on the upfront. Correct. Which will allow you to not have to keep up with the Joneses and have the stigma, which will allow you to budget better. Exactly. And I do think that with the next generation, we're just more honest. A hundred percent. Like In some ways. We're not embarrassed. In some ways we're remarkably more Worse. honest, which is yes. why I love yes. Gen Z and Gen Alpha. <laughs> In other ways, are, we're, cle we're more clever. Mm -hmm. We're very, we, I'm, I feel like I'm so part of it. <laughs> I'm an old fucking, but dude compared to these kids, but I love these kids, but they're a little more clever. They're all so good at PR. Yes. That they're outflanking some of their boomer parents and Gen Xers, but the reality is I see them. They're, they're, the hypocrisy is extraordinary, but you're right. There's a lot of things they're more vulnerable and transparent about, but they're also, 
the, the lack of accountability and entitlement is a blind spot, and then we're talking general. Yes. Um, but I agree with you, they're incredibly, they're creating some incredible uh, frameworks that are gonna work for them, and I'm excited about that. Yeah. I root for them heavy, especially Gen Alpha, because I love their cynicism towards Gen Z. They These are- 10 year olds are gangsters.